Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be our kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who on the holy mount revealed to chosen witnesses your well beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured in raiment white and glistening, mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, May by faith behold the King in his beauty, who with you, O Father, and you, O Holy Spirit, lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading is from Exodus chapter 34, verses 29 through 35. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he, gave them in and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face, but whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 99. We will read the psalm responsibly by whole verse. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord the is great in Zion. He is, he is high, high above, above all peoples. peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. 
Almighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They call upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Second, read, second reading is from Second Peter. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to refresh your memory, since I know that my death will come soon, as indeed our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort so that my after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we have been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven, and we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Now, about eight days after Jesus had foretold his death and resurrection, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and went up on the mountain to pray. 
and while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. And from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They kept silent. In those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good morning. You all are very aware that Trinity is a founding member of the Dream Builders organization. It is a group of about, I think it's seven faith communities that came together several decades ago to do Habitat for Humanity type of work. We've done things in Baltimore City and Baltimore County. Since I have been here, we've also been to New Orleans a couple times, to Mississippi, Puerto Rico, and this summer we went to Kentucky. It is a wonderful, transformative time for any mission trip, um, for the missionaries who go and for the communities that they are serving. We are very excited that this year, Gordon signed up to go and represented Trinity on this trip. So I have invited Gordon to come up and speak today about his experience. Um, and he also has some pictures in the hall uh, to share with you. Now, one question you might have is, well, if it's Habitat-like, why don't we just do Habitat for Humanity? It's a bigger organization. There's more resources. There's more places. The short version of the of the answer is for Habitat for Humanity, they do not allow youth to use power tools. You have to be at least 16 to be on the site, and you have to be 18 to use a power tool. So part of this is kids getting that lesson in how to do this work and how to use those tools and the level of confidence that it builds in them and it's a skill that they will carry with them for the rest of their lives. So it's very restrictive with Habitat on who can do what, and thus Dream Builders came up with their own solution. And it's not unique. There are lots of organizations like Dream Builders all over the country where they really want to do this type of work but have had that difficulty. So th this is how we work with it. But I want to give Gordon as much time as possible, so the floor is yours, my friend. Is this working? It is? Oh, okay. Can you hear me, Charlie? Oh, okay. All right, so uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, which is many of you, because uh, I'm, I'm Gordon, and I attend the uh, 8 o'clock service for the last six or seven months now, and mostly that's because no one should be subjected to my singing. We're just going to go with that. So. Uh, Anne did a nice job of framing this a little bit about what Dream Builders organization is. I'll add a couple of quick comments. They do um, often partner with a local, some sort of a local affiliate. 
so that they have people uh, who are able to help with logistics and other stuff like that. So in this case, we partnered with a wonderful group called the Housing Development Alliance, or HDA. Um, I work for the government, so I'll use acronyms. Um, the HDA was, was a wonderfully organized place. Everything was where it needed to be. We were never short of two by fours or nails or anything, so it was really well done. Um, <clears throat> and they provided for, we worked on two houses and they provided a lead carpenter and a couple of assistant carpenters for each house. And I'll come back and say a little bit more about that later. Uh, let me talk really quickly. Oh, I'll add one other thing, sorry. Um, in addition to supplying people to go and work on these trips, um, uh, Dream Builders also supplies funds in some cases. So this year, Okay, do I need to do this? Okay, do I have to start over? <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. no, it says Charlie. Okay. Um, yeah, look, the look of terror on your face, Charlie, was that? Okay, anyway, um, so um, let me talk a little bit about uh, what happened in Hazard and why we were there. For those of you who haven't heard much about it, Hazard is uh, in eastern Kentucky. It's in a very rural Appalachia coal country area. It's a small town um, and Hazard and the not as much Hazard itself, but the greater surrounding area was subjected to some horrible flash flooding last July, just over a year ago. Uh, 15 inches of rain came. A lot of it came pretty, pretty fast. At one point, the rate was was four inches per hour. This is a very hilly area with hills come ravines and valleys, great places for water to gather. Um, the North Fork of the Kentucky River crested at 43 and a half feet above its normal pace within hours. This was a, a colossal event. Um, hundreds and hundreds of structures were damaged. Uh, at least 44 people have died. I use the word at least because not everyone's yet accounted for. I believe they found a body as recently as last week. So it's, it's a tragedy. Um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about what we did. Uh, we did what were, what Dream Builders calls, is it a blitz build, Michelle, sorry? So we started with a, oh, uh, sorry, let me refer you to your uh, bulletin. Um, I'm sorry. If you look on the inside cover of your bulletin, there are two pictures. The top picture is before and the bottom picture is after. So we started with uh, the folks at HDA had put down a foundation and some floor joists, and that was it. And so we put down subfloors. We built all of the exterior and interior walls. We erected all the floor uh, um, roof trusses, all the walls, all the roof trusses. Um, we roofed the house complete with sh uh, tar paper and shingles, and we got most of the way through doing the siding and building uh, two side porches. So the house, uh, also, we got in windows and doors, too. So the house is fully weathered. It's ready, for, it's ready to be safe from the rain uh, should it come, and it's ready for the other interior trades, the plumbers and electricians and cabinet people, uh, carpeting, flooring, whatnot. It's ready for those folks to come in and turn it into a livable house. Um, this picture on the bottom with the mostly sided houses is where we left off at the end of our five days of work. Um, so we did that uh, um, house building, but we also, as Ann alluded to, we did some, I'll call it youth building, right? Um, about half the people on the, if you now, sorry, if you now turn your attention to the cover of the bulletin, there's a picture of all of us in our t-shirts, about half of those 20 or 20 odd people, about half of them are youth. Um, and so we get to do a lot of time with building houses, but also building youth, teaching them a little bit about construction um, or learning a little bit about it from them. Um, and most, more importantly, teaching them about what it's like to give back and what it's like to meet people from a different, different environment than where they grew up and perhaps a, a less fortunate, uh, people in less fortunate circumstances. Um, in addition, um, I, this is my first Dream Builders trip. I think Michelle may, may tell us about um, how they also sometimes go out and repair houses. They don't just, this was starting de novo from a, building a new house, but they also do repairs, drywall, uh, roofing, uh, wheelchair ramps, whatever, whatever it may be. 
Um, and we were very fortunate in this experience to have a chance to work a little bit on um, what I'm going to call repairing people. So if you now go to the second page of your bulletin, there's two pictures there. What, one picture is a group of people um, uh, lifting up what's, what's the final roof truss for one of the houses. I'll leave, it, I'll leave it to your imagination to see if you can find me in that photo. Um, the picture on the bottom is three gentlemen. The, the gentleman on the left is John, Mc, well, what's his name, Michelle? Macbeth. I was going to say McGrath. John Macbeth, he's the leader of Dream Builders. Wonderful gentleman. The two gentlemen on the right, Dustin is in the middle, and Shadle is, in the, is on the right side. And they were the assistant carpenters on house number one which was the cooler house. Um, and uh, Dustin and I became, uh, we sort of hit it off a little during the week and we talked a lot, and passed a lot of boards back and forth to each other. And he confided in me during the week that um, he's a former drug addict. He spent time in jail. Sorry. Um, but I learned a lot from him about carpentry. And I like to think maybe I gave something back to him too. So maybe you go on one of these trips and you get to help rebuild people, not just houses. Um, so that was a special moment for me. Uh, you may, uh, I'll talk, talk a little bit about, um, maybe you wanna do one of these trips, um, but you may worry, oh, I'm not in the right age group for one of these. Uh, adventures, right? So let me ask you, raise your hand, especially out in Zoom land. Raise your hand if you think you're too young. Okay, I got you, Charlie. <laughs> so uh, one more time, I know we're, we're picture hopping here. I'll, I'll turn your attention to the cover of the bulletin. I've, I've numbered a several of the people there. So if you think you're too young, I will draw your attention to Anna, individual number one. She was 13 in this photo. So if you're older than 13, you're not too young. Okay. Does anybody think that they are too uh, venerable? <clears throat> okay. So I will, uh, I will turn your attention to individuals labeled as, as number two. She worked on the other house. I didn't have a lot of interaction with her, so I honestly don't remember her name. I think it was Margaret. Margaret is in her 60s. And if you come to the slideshow after the service, you can see her wielding a saw and, and uh, putting up siding. Um, the two gentlemen with the number three above them, one of them is John McGrath, the other one is my former old neighbor, Arthur. Uh, they're both in their 70s. Uh, who knows where I'm going with this? Gentleman number four on the far right, that's Frank. He was my co-adult co-driver for van number three for their nine hour trip down to Kentucky. Uh, and he's in his early 80s. So raise your hand if you're between 13 and 80 something. Okay, if you are, there's precedent for you coming on one of these trips. Um, I don't believe there are any age limitations, but certainly we can, we can uh, put an upper and lower bounds at 18 and uh, 80, uh, sorry, 13 and 80. Uh, so you may ask yourself, well, is the work all done? Do we need to do more, Gordon? Well, I now draw your attention to the last picture, if I can find it myself. I can't. Okay. It's a picture of a map. It's on one of the pages in your bulletin. Um, so let me tell you the story about why, why I was standing next to this map. Uh, during the course of the week, uh, through a, a comedy of errors, um, the place we were supposed to shower had no hot water, so we wound up, uh, but the town mayor got involved and we wound up being allowed to use the high school gym. This is a, a sense of how grateful the town was that we were there. Uh, and he insisted on uh, inviting us to a tour of City Hall and to buying a small dinner for us. And they had this on a poster board, and I took a picture with my phone. It's not the clearest photo, so I will, I will save you the eye test. If you look down there, all the dark blue dots are homes inside of a flood zone uh, that were a total loss. All of the light blue dots are homes inside of a flood zone where there was a partial loss or significant damage. Dark red dots 
total loss within a flood zone, light red or orange dots are partial loss, um, sorry, outside of a flood zone. Red is out, blue is inside flood zone, red is outside of flood zone. Um, the point is that the people, anybody who wasn't out, anybody who was outside of a flood zone almost certainly doesn't have flood insurance. Anybody who's in a mobile home is not eligible for flood insurance. Do the math. Most of these people did not, are not insured for these losses. There's over 500 dots on the page. <coughs> and the mayor thanked us for removing, <coughs> removing two of those dots. So there's a lot of work left to do. <coughs> Pardon me. There's a lot of work left to do. And we may go back to hazard because, in part because the HDA, the local organization, was so good and so well organized. So if you want to be part of this, you can join us. Um, <clears throat> if Judy were here, she would wax poetic that you don't need a lot of experience. Um, they'll, we'll, people, people who have experience in using these tools and, and what construction methods are will be happy to show you what to do. Um, if you don't want to go on one of these trips, um, for the people who do go, you have to pay your own room and board or whatever <clears throat> transportation. So uh, some people, that may be a, a challenge for, so you could donate money for a scholarship for somebody to go who wants to go but might not be able to afford it. And finally, you could donate towards the larger cause. Dream Builders accepts, I have a website, they'll accept their donations, and I think Trinity, yeah, so Trinity will also, if, if you if you want to, you can donate money to, Triv to Trinity and indicate that it's for Dream Builders. And you'll go to support what I think is a very uh, meaningful organization. Um, so that was it for the 8 o'clock service, but since you're here at the 10 o'clock, do you have any comments for us? Why don't you take the mic so that the Zoomers can hear you? Hi, Zoomers. <clears throat> Just... Oh. oh, my. I'm, I'm vertically challenged. Um, so I... I want to give kudos to Gordon, one, for representing Trinity, but two, um, normally a Dream Builders Blitz build, we usually take 60 folks to build two houses. We had 23 people that built two houses, so less than half of the norm, and they were able to build these two houses. So they did incredible work in a short period of time to get as far as they did on these houses. Um, so, number one, kudos to Dream Builders and obviously Gordon. Um, two, save the date. Dream Builders does have a big fundraiser, usually once a year. Um, it is our spaghetti dinner, which is usually at Temple Isaiah. It is October 14th this year. Um, I will get the flyer to Denise. Um, it's kind of being created now, but that is a way that you can help come have dinner. Um, and contribute towards Dream Builders. There will be silent auction items, things like that, but that's something to put on your calendar. Um, and the last thing, which I'll talk about maybe um, in coffee hour, because um, I forgot my flyer and I have it on my phone, but that's okay, was the success we did with raising um, money for the solar fans and for um, the shoes that we gave to Puerto Rico. Um, I don't have all my numbers. I believe we did over 70 something fans um, between St. Mark's and Trinity and like 180 pairs of shoes or something like that um, were mailed to Kike down in Puerto Rico or the second batch is going to be going actually in the next couple of weeks down to Puerto Rico. So um, thank you. Thank you for your support. Um, but obviously, as this is um, something that costs significant money, I know Gordon mentioned $25,000 for each home Dream Builders has to give. Um, so it is money that obviously we have to raise in order to even participate in it. So never too old. I've been on trips where we've had people well into their 80s. There are any jobs that you can do. We will find you a job. Doesn't have to be you're handling a tool. If you want to, we will give you that. But there are other jobs that can be done that can help support um, us as the missioners on the trip. So thank you and thank you. All right, so thank you for your time and for listening. And um, remember, 10 o'clockers, you don't want to hear me sing. Uh, and I promise not to sing during coffee hour, but Melissa and I have a lot of pictures if you're interested, and I will regale you with stories if you want.
One of the things that Trinity has always done well, and if you look through our history, has proven to be true, is take care of other people. And we, we do it by doing a great job taking care of one another, but we reach out into the community where we are in significant ways, but we realize that the need goes beyond our little town of Elkridge. So to have an organization and to be a part of an organization like Dream Builders is at the core of who we are, and it is so very important to our work together. We're talking about this today because today is the Transfiguration Sunday, and we read these two stories in the Old Testament with Moses going into the very presence of God and being physically changed. His, his, his face turns white, so he has to wear a veil when he, he steps out among the people because it's just so shocking about how, how white his face goes. And then also to think about the, the story of um, Jesus and the disciples going up onto this, the top of the mountain and Moses and Elijah appear and Jesus is transfigured and the disciples' reaction is, let's build some tents and stay here because it's so good to be here. Mission trips are often considered mountaintop experiences. You think about it and you think, why would I want to do that? I'm going to go and I'm not going to be in a nice comfy hotel. The shower is not going to work. I'm going to have to get on a bus to go to the gym. I'm going to sleep on a cot. God knows what I'm going to eat. I'm going to do hard work. My body's going to be sore. I'm going to be taking more ibuprofen than I've ever had. And it's going to be one of the best weeks of your life. And every single part of it is going to mean something and matter. And 90% of people who go on mission trips do it because they think they want to give back or make a difference. They realize they might have a little bit extra and they want to spend some time doing something for other people. It is the best thing you can do for your own mental health. We always say if you are feeling down and really having a hard time and you're looking at your life and going, what's the point? Help somebody else. Help somebody else. And this is a really significant way to do that, to help somebody else. And the person that is transfigured or transformed and has that mountaintop experience, yes, you're doing a lot for the community where we're serving, but it transforms us. It transforms our hearts. It transforms our minds, the way we look at the world, the way we look at what we have. You know, just our ability to have a home where we're not really worried about a flood or a flash flood knowing that we have the means that if something like that happens, that we can rebuild. It's unbelievable the many things that we have. And we don't recognize that just by, being, just by living here in Howard County or Anne Arundel County, we're some of the richest people in the world. We don't realize what it's like to live in Appalachia. We don't realize what it's like to, to have that nothing and to really be reliant on these organizations that Dream Builders partners with in order to improve their homes or rebuild their homes or to get those resources that they so desperately need. So for us to be able to be a part of that is an honor. And I couldn't be more thankful to Gordon for stepping up and, and you've been here, what, six, seven months, and you're like, yes, I'm all in. And by the way, Dream Builders, yes, I'm gonna go with 20 people I've never met before. Why not? That's a big deal and couldn't be more thankful. <laughs> well, it's good that you're a very peop you're a peopley person. You know, that's a good thing because I think that would be a little intimidating for me. You know, but I really appreciate the effort. So, really good. So, um, I hope you can come and see pictures in the hall after. Ask questions. He's got a ton of stories, um, and think about it for yourself or for a family member, particularly if you have children or grandchildren that you think would want to be a part of this, would love to have them join that team. Okay, amen. To stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. the people are found in the bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. There may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they, that they may, may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we may also come, come to share. share let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for our families. John Collins, Caleb Ashley and Abigail Copeland, Betty Crater and Andrew Dunn. We offer prayers for our military and their families. Eric, Robbie, Anthony, Anna Marie, Vincent, Brian, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Kevin, Jerry, and Luke. We offer prayers for our college students, Karen, John, Kelsey, Zach, Virginia, AJ, Lydia, Ben, Kristen, and Joe. And let's say together the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly Father, Father we, we thank, thank you for calling us into your service. Our, our mission is, is to invite others, others to be a part of our community inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you and to serve all in your name. Help us to respond to that call wholeheartedly and lead us boldly into the future. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Be stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Uh, just a couple of things to note in the bulletin. We have an announcement about backpack blessings. We are going to collect school supplies for the kids at Deep Run. There's the list that is here. If we could focus on purchasing those items, they are the most requested items from the school. There are other items you see, and it's, you know, buy one, get 14 free. Go ahead and get those. But this is really what we're focusing on. Um, this is what they, they need the most. So if you can help us out with that, we're putting those uh, backpacks together um, so that they, kids will have them at the beginning of school. So we need them sooner rather than later. And I think the sales have already begun. So help us out with that if you can. Um, also, we have just two tickets remaining for the Orioles game on August 23rd. If you would like to go and you've been meaning to sign up and you have not signed up, you need to do it today to reserve your spot. Um, Annette Meller is providing us a bus, so we will meet here at 5.30. The bus is pulling out of the parking lot at 5.45. All this is gonna be in tidbits the next couple weeks. It's gonna be in the net, we're gonna announce it, so you don't need to remember today. But we're pulling out, they'll drop us at the gate. Um, there are other seats available in the section. If you, for whatever reason, don't sign up and then the tickets are gone, they're just twice the price. We got them at we got them half price. So you want to save a little? See it as a buy one, get one free thing. You know, they're $30 a ticket. And if it's cost prohibitive, let us know because we can help out if need be. Questions about any of that? Are there birthdays in the coming week? Yes, Anna Marie Kasims has a birthday this week. Yay! Okay, Anna Marie, that's fantastic. Any others? All right, let's pray for Anna Marie. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for Anna Marie, for her commitment to this place, her kindness, her generosity, her sense of humor, her many gifts and talents that you have given her so freely. We just ask your blessing upon her as she celebrates the, her birthday, and we pray this year would be one of health, happiness, and wholeness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy birthday, Anna Marie. About wedding anniversaries. All right. What you got, Charlie? Uh, can we please say a prayer for JJ? JJ is in the ambulance outside being taken to the hospital. Okay. Yes, we can. Let's say a prayer for JJ. Holy God, we thank you for JJ. His kindness, his friendship how he's willing to just do anything for anybody that he can possibly do. He's been struggling with his health recently. We pray your blessing upon him. We pray that you would help the doctors, nurses, medical professionals at the hospital be able to diagnose and treat whatever is happening. We pray that you would make your presence known to him and give him a sense of comfort, peace, strengthen his body, strengthen his spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for that, Charlie. Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. To be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.